guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal, and this what if has been beaten to death. Literally and figuratively. <sighs> this is, and you've probably read in the title, what if M. Naruto was in the Ambu? So, I'm gonna do it a little differently. And just to, just the PA for YouTube and you people who are watching, none of the assets that I show in the video, because I'm only showing this picture, there's a little watermark on the picture for who originally made it. I love it when artists do that. It shows their little... They're dedicated to their craft of drawing. I, I love that. And I can't... I honestly can't read that because it's either too small or I'm just too lazy to zoom in. No, sorry. I'm too lazy to actually read it. There you go. If you can actually read that. I can't. So that's the person who first made this, I think. Hopefully. Hopefully someone didn't just block it out and rewrite a name. But, anyway. So, the changes in this is Naruto's going to be in the Anbu. A. And B. Naruto's going to be female. The normal, plain name of Naruko for Naruto's female version is the name I'm going to be using. So, people have done it to where Hiruzen didn't know about Naruto. There's um, ones where Naruto was abducted from the village and then brought back to Root. Yeah, I'm, there's ones like that, but I'm going to do mine differently. So, this starts 20-ish years before or Minato became Hokage. I think he's 23 when he's when he becomes Hokage. There is a dispute between Haruzen and Danzo Shimoda. And Danzo dies, air quotes, in this dispute. But really, he faked his death with that dispute and is just sitting and waiting. Because Root's still active. Yes, his organization called Root. It's still active. And all of his members have been unsealed. They can say whatever they want, but they're still loyal to Donzo because they've been trained that way. So Donzo is still active, but he's gone. Hiruzen makes a funeral procession for Donzo because he still thought of Donzo as a friend and a true shinobi of the village. So he still does a procession. Donzo goes in a uh, outfit so he doesn't get recognized. And we start at the beginning of canon. I think it's 21 years later. Because I think he's been a... No, he's been Hokage for like four years. Yeah, he's been Hokage for like four years. So 24-ish. Kushina is giving birth to Naruko. And instead of, and this is a big spoiler for Shippuden, so if you guys haven't seen Shippuden or watched the entire thing, that's going to that's gonna be a big spoiler, because I'm going to be calling him his actual name, because it's just the fake martyr, it's just too long to say. Obito attacks Minato and Kushina to try to get Naruko. But Obito gets attacked and gets injured, from a root agent that was hiding in the corner of the room that no one knew about. And the root agent makes it look like they hit Naruko and killed Naruko. So the fourth goes berserk. And this is where the timeline changes a little bit more. The root agent knows Funjutsu, which is the sealing techniques that um, Minato knows. So he knows the 8 trigram seal that was on Naruko in the original. So <laughs> Minato, being half death, being half in, uh, half to death, is just hanging on by a thread and he seals half the QB inside of himself with the Reaper Death Seal. And then he sees the root agent with the mask on walk out with Naruko in his hands and start doing the sealing process. 
And he smiles because he, he saw Nautico and saw that she survived. So I was like, I'm glad she survived. But I can't do anything else. So Minato and Kushina's chakras... Well, Kushina's chakra uh, is still sealed inside a, uh, Naruko because Kushina still has a little bit of the Ninetales chakra in her. And they need to get it all out before something absorbs the chakra that's still in the body. So he sucks out all the chakra, uh, puts it in there. And this is a special root agent that has been experimented on by Orochimaru. Yamato. Do not know his uh, original name, but his name in Shippuden is Yamato. And yes, I'm still saying that there's going to be a lot more spoilers ahead. So, so the root agent uses his wood style, and yes, he's going to be old enough to use a wood style, uses his wood style to seal in the Nine Tails and Kushina's Chakra into um, Naruko. So Nine Tails and Kushina, well, part of Kushina, is sealed within Naruko. And the root agent gives Naruko the key immediately. But he locks it behind a memory gate. Which I'll get to that later. And then the root agent disappears with a Shunshuim, which is a little almost teleportation kind of technique. And he gets back to Donzo, and he hands the child to Donzo. And Hiruzen finally gets up to Kushina and Minato and sees that the baby's nowhere to be found. So, we skip four years. Hiruzen has been beating himself up and I'm going to make a really weird uh, interjection into this. But it's going to be really cool. He's been beating himself up. And he's been dreading sending this letter out. So he finally gives the letter to a carrier hawk. And it goes off to find a certain student of his that's currently traveling the world. Not ever wanting to come back to Konoha. <sighs> if anybody has read the Legacy fanfic... You'll know exactly who that is. But let's go back to the story. <laughs> Another student of his comes back to the town and asks what happened to his student. And Hiruzen has to fill him in what happened and what happened to Naruko, the little child. And he goes, I, wh what? And they don't know her name. All they know is that she was supposed to be named after the gutsy ninja in one of his stories, Jiraiya. Yes, it's Jiraiya. Naruto. Within these four years, Donzo has been raising Naruto like Sai. So, Naruto has absolutely no emotions being shown at all. She looks differently because Donzo has been slowly experimenting on her with the help of uh, Orochimaru's uh, genetic reshuffling, so or, uh, genetic mutations. So first off, they've taken out her eyes and given her different eyes. So they allow are allowing her the ability to turn off and on the Sharingan. Because they found a way to combine the Sharingan and the Byakugan. And there's been a speculation of what would a Sharingan-Byakugan mix be called. And then one of the YouTubers on YouTube, I forgot his name, forgot what series it, it was. I think it was The Copying Eyes. I don't remember. Or Dr. Kohu. Uh... Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. But, uh... She now has Byakugan-like eyes with a Sharingan-like pattern in it. And she could turn off and on the Sharingan because they implanted some of her DNA into the eyes. So the eyes have the ability 
to see 300, basically 360 with the Byakugan, the Shining Gun's ability of perfect vision, and the ability to turn it off and on with the inclusion of uh, Naruko's cells. And they have infinite number of these eyes. So if her eyes get damaged, Donzo will just give her new ones to replace them. Now, we go to an old man, old looking man. He has a cast on his left arm. I think his left arm. Um, no, his right arm and his right eye. And he walks into the, uh, um, uh, city, and he's changed his genetic makeup completely, so his chakra changed a little bit, and that's going to help with a little bit in the story. So the guards stop him and ask what he, is he doing, and he acts like a old withered man, and he says that I'm here as a refugee from, uh, Kirigekker. I think it's Kirigekker. The village hidden in the mist, or the blood mist village, if you want to get more technical at this point. And they say, we're going to have to check you out. And he goes, fine, I do have a four-year-old with me. And he points to behind him. And this emotionless child walks out and was told to act sad and scared. So she puts on a perfect facade of being sad and scared. And this, at this point, she has bleach white hair, and her eyes are perfectly white, like she's blind. But she's moving around per perfectly fine. So, one of the Ambu, who's always watching the gate, because Haruzin's like, yeah, if we have enemy ninja attack, we need to keep an eye. So, Ambu, keep an eye on each for the gate, and they switch, they switch shifts. So it's easier for them. <laughs> but this Ambu immediately shunshwins to Hiruzen's office. And Jiraiya and Hiruzen are currently talking about what to do with the uh, letter he sent to his other student. One of his other students. About her daughter. And this is a very important meeting. And private. They were told to only interrupt if it's that important. And he says... Yes, it is that important. I need in. And the Ambu shun shuins in and bows and says that there's someone here that says they're from Kirigekker. They got a Kirigekker headband and they have a child with them. And she's moving like she can see, but she looks blind. And that was important for Hiruzen. And Hiruzen asks, okay... And what does she look like? And he goes, she has bleach white hair and she has white eyes. She's super pale and she's acting emotions. And who's in here is this and goes, okay, allow them in and send them immediately to the um, hotel. I'll be there to greet them and discuss stuff with them in civilian clothes. And they go, but Lord Hokage, and he goes, Oh, don't, don't, I'm going to have you guys in normal shinobi attire without masks so we can blend in. And he goes, it's Lord Hokage. And he tells that to all the Ambu. So all the Ambu send all the Jonin and the, the civilians away from the path that they take. So they take a path into one of the hotels and Donzo knows exactly what's going on because he sees no civilians and no uh, shinobi. So he's like, Hiruzen's meeting us immediately. And his face looks different. He has white hair to match Naruko so he can act like their father and daughter. Or grandfather and daughter. Or grandfather and granddaughter. <sighs> My brain's not working sometimes. So Hiruzen shows up and he's asking around. He's poking around and he goes, yes, that she's been trained by some of the seven ninja, uh, seven uh, swordsmen of the mist. And Hiruzen's eyes widen and go, okay, 
in what sorts? And he goes, I don't know. All I know is Zabuza Momochi, the missing nin, helped us get to the fire country. And that is true because they were hiding in Kirigeker, the uh, village hidden in the mist. And Zabuza is under Donzo's payroll because Donzo's like, you're a missing nin, I could pay you to do my bidding. And Zabuza was training Naruko for a little bit, the one year that he knew her. That's important later, too. So she knows a little bit of Kenjutsu. Uh, Ken uh, she knows how to harness a little bit of her chakra. She doesn't have any chakra control whatsoever. Because, duh, Jinjiriki, no chakra control. So, Haruzen says, I will have a swordsman keep training her and keeping an eye on you guys because we have a process to become civ civilians of the fire country. And he accepts. He goes under an alias. He, uh, Since her, his genetic code has changed because of Orochimaru, who is still in rice country, by the way. He's been bouncing around in rice country. They all are <laughs> just having a good old time in Kona Hall. We skip. <sighs> they start at eight. So we skip four years. Nautico has shown no emotion in those four years near any of the, uh, the fellow ninja of the leaf. And she's been entered into the uh, academy. And Donzo says that you must have a mask. And she asks, what kind of mask does he want her to have? And he says, you must be the loudmouth, dead last of the class until the very end. And she goes, yes, sir. And he goes, don't call me sir. Call me grandpa until we release, uh, remove our, our fake identities. And she goes, yes, grandpa. And he goes, good. Now, go to the academy and learn fast, learn well, and don't forget, and be the loudmouth dead last. And so it goes up pretty much up to canon with her being the loudmouth dead last, because she's been shy, she gets into class, she's completely different. And she fakes that all the way through the academy. It's now, she's 12. And Hinata Hyuga, and this is also another change, Hinata Hyuga has been able to activate her Byakugan. And there's a difference between normal people chakra, which is blue, and they can see the power of the flow, and Chinchuriki chakra, which is orange and blue. So one day, she activates her Byakugan and is just looking at her classmates and sees the orange chakra. So she went home, and her father's a lot nicer in this one. So he's not saying, you're weak, you're the disgrace to the family. It's like, you're weak. Right now, your power is a disgrace to the family, but you can get stronger. And he's been saying that. So he still puts her down a little, but not completely. So she still has a little bit of hope. Ooh, Markiplier. Markiplier. <laughs> so, uh... We go to... Huh. Plane. Uh... Yeah, the very last day, she's supposed to do a Bunshin, a Kurimi, which is a substitution, and a, um... Henge, which is a transformation. And <laughs> she's not learned the 
SSS ranked jutsu that shall not be named because I'm not going to actually name it. That Naruto created when he was little. She has not created that because she doesn't need it. <sighs> what she did create was already <clears throat> an elemental transformation. Which she was given Hashirama cells, Byakugan cells, and, or Hyuga cells, and Uchiha cells. So she has Hashirama cells in her body. She has Uchiha cells and Hyuga cells in her eyes. <laughs> so her being pale is from the Hashirama cells, by the way. So we go to um, her leaving the academy that day and she was told she couldn't pass because she couldn't do a bunshin. And she walks into the forest and says, Kage bunshin no jutsu, which is multi-shadow clone tech, multi-shadow clones. And she summons 3,000 shadow clones. And someone was watching her. An Ambu who thought she was a little strange. She walked in and she said, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. And she was a little frustrated and she was taught not to show her emotions at all. But she was really frustrated that she worked so hard to master things. And they're like, yeah, no, you're not passing. So she literally wanted to destroy something. So she, all of her clones in unison pulled out a Rasan gun and made it all combined into one big one, which is 3,000 3, times bigger than the original. And they slam it into something. And this is out uh, behind uh, Hokage Mountain, so no one knows where it is. Only Inu, and if you know who Inu is, Saw this. So he immediately Shunshuin's away. And she sends the Shunshuin. Because yes. She does have. Uh, uh, Kuruma's sensing abilities. She sends the Shunshuin. And she's like. Shisa. Which is a bad word in German. Sorry. Hi Jack. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? Yeah. He wanted to say hi. He said hi. So she shooting Shween back to the hotel room and she walked into the hotel room and Donzo immediately started scolding her for Shunshweening, which she's not supposed to know, quote unquote, know until later in her Shinobi career. And she's immediately apologizing and she doesn't tell Donzo at all about the Inu incident. Because she wants to find the shinobi who saw her. But Inu immediately went to the Hokage and said, Yeah, um, that's a Jinchuriki. And <laughs> her reason's like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, Nariko, what was her last name again? And... He looks through the paper, uh, hers and looks through the papers and says her last name and he goes, yes, her. She's a Chinchuriki. Don't know what, a, don't know which tailed beast, but she's a Chinchuriki because she just summoned 3,000 Kage Bunchins. And he says this and Hiruzen's eyes widen and he goes, the hell? Why didn't he say that? And he goes, probably because he's hiding it. She went behind Kage Mountain, Hokage Mountain. And used it. And Hiruzen's like, um, okay. I will let the Ambu know to keep an eye on her. And he goes, I was suppressing my chakra completely. So not even the most skilled of sensors could, could pick me up without a, me moving. And one little finger movement after I, I saw her summon 3,000, she noticed. And... He goes, what do you mean? And he says, well, remember how the Nine Tails just disappeared? And he goes, yeah, I think she's the Jinchiriki of the Nine Tails. And he goes, what do you mean? And he goes, well, 
<sighs> my teacher's wife, and she was a very skilled censor and skilled swordswoman. And he goes, yeah. So, and he goes, well, I think that Naruko is related to Kushina Uzumaki. And Hiruzen goes, what? And he goes, I would like a blood test done to see if she's related to Kushina Uzumaki at all. And Hiruzen goes, I will, since they're still technically the, under our whim until I say otherwise. And I haven't said otherwise. So let me go and request it. So he goes to uh, Donzo and Nariko's little apartment, and he finds that they're not there. And the Ambu that has been watching them sends a letter with a seal that only Haruzin can open with his chakra signature. That says... They're at training ground seven. And you need to see this. And Hiruzen Shunshuin's over to training ground seven. And he's just far enough to where Naruto can't sense him, which is roughly a mile away. So he's watching with chakra enhanced eyes so he can actually see what's going on. Because it's pretty freaking far away. And he's just watching and he sees... Her do a flying Raijin. 3,000 Kage Bunshins. Her using elemental techniques. Her doing everything an Ambu person should know already. Her using a bastardized version of the Ambu technique, which is meant to uh, incapacitate or either kill, as just kill. He's seeing all this, and she's doing it at lightning speeds. And he's like, what's going on? And he sees someone he thought he would never see again. Because the bandage is off, and by this time, the uh, uh, Uchiha massacre happened. The bandage is off, and the arm cast is off. He sees eyes on his arm and a special eye in his right eye socket. And he looks and sees this and goes, what is going on? And he says, well, I think we found Don Lenzo Shimoda. And he goes, what do you mean? And he goes, well, we have three sensors here that are just strong enough to sense from this far away. And it's his chakra signature. And... They go through the paces, and he's like, okay, I'm going to start walking over to see what's going on. And Nyambu starts fanning out, and Nautico senses the Ambu and, and stops fighting immediately, just freezes, and starts going through uh, a Genin forms. And Donzo, knowing exactly what she's doing, Starts slowing down too to an old man's pace, and his henge gets back up, and he puts on the cast again, and he starts using his staff as a sword. And Hiruzen walks up and says, "Well, hello there. Um, these are meant for Gennings." And she goes, "Or Donzo's like, oh, sorry, we we're going to fix that now." You leave, and he goes, no, 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 uh, you don't need to, uh, and he walks up to Nautico and says, I need to talk to you later, you are a citizen of the village, I need to talk to you later, you, I'll talk to you in a bit, too, please go to my office, uh, the big red tower with the, the fire, uh, nation, uh, fire nation symbol, no, not avatar symbol, and she goes, yes, Hokage, and she walks towards the tower. And Hiruzen, once she gets far enough away, Hiruzen looks at Donzo and says, I thought you died. 
and 15 Ambu immediately jump Donzo, trying to capture him alive. Donzo's cast immediately falls off because he lets his hand, arm hang down. And yes, I'm killing off Donzo early. No Sasuke arc with Donzo. And no, Donzo was not part of the Uchiha sting. But Itachi still was. So he let the cast fall. And he sees the eyes again. He goes, well, it's not the outcome I hoped for. And he goes, I have one question before we start fighting again, old friend. And he goes, what is it? He goes, when? When did you take the Jinjiriki? And he goes, I didn't take anything. I'm still doing this for the betterment of our village. I have never done it for any other reason. And he goes, you poor, poor soul. And Jiraiya is still in the village, so he's been watching this entire thing. And he walks up to Nautico and uh, starts talking with her because she's walking to the, the Hokage Tower. And she has a mask on. And Jiraiya says, here you go, and gives her a fox mask. And says, this will help with everything. And just walks away. And she goes, uh, okay. So she hangs the fox mask on her belt. And she's holding something that Haruzen gave her. It's a little box, and he's just walking back. She's just walking back to the Hokage's office. And she walks in, and the receptionist greets her with a warm smile, because nobody knows about her being the Chinchuriki. And the receptionist says, what can I do for you, little lady? And she says, I'm, I need to get into the Hokage's office, because I need to wait for him. And the receptionist says, okay, I will lead you there. Or do you not need it? And she goes, I don't need it. Uh, and the receptionist looks at the paper and says, at least an hour. And she goes, it may take a while for him to get back. It says that he's currently doing something. And she goes, okay, I'll wait. So she sits right in front of the door, waiting. Emotionless, staring at a wall, waiting. Three hours later, Hiruzen is battered. He's beaten. The Ambu are dead on the ground. Donzo is finally dead on the ground with his head chopped off and his arm with the eyes crushed by the Monkey King. I don't remember his name, but he went into the Adamantine staff. And Haruzen flares his chakra as much as he could and the Healing Ambu that has been watching senses the flare because they have a little bit of sensing ability and they immediately bolt over to Hiruzen and start healing him. And they flare their chakra up as much as possible and every Ambu knows who this uh, healer is. So they immediately get there. And this healer, and this healer is going to be part of the uh, route too. And he pulls out a note that he wrote. And Hiruzen's losing consciousness. And he hands the note to Hiruzen. And Hiruzen takes it, and he's barely conscious. And the guy pulls out two food pills and feeds them to Hiruzen, which are two good pills for him. And this root agent was not corrupted by Donzo. So, he takes off his Ambu mask and puts on his Root mask and bows gratefully and shunshuins away. The rest of the Ambu find Hiruzen and take him immediately to the hospital. Nartiko is still outside of uh, uh, Hiruzen's office. The secretary comes up to her and asks if she wants anything, and she goes, no, I'm good. And the secretary says, uh, I'm going to this great ramen place. You want to come with me? It, I think he's it's going to still be out for a little bit longer. And she goes, uh, sh sure. And she's acting a little shy around her because she put on a mask. 
And so the secretary, being a lot nicer, takes her to Ichiraku. Yeah, Ichiraku. And Naruko, still having a childish side, because uh, Donzo couldn't beat that out of her with the training, tastes the Ichiraku ramen and immediately lights up with happiness because she's never tasted anything this good. And she immediately compliments the owners of the Ichiraku uh, ramen stand. I forget their names. I know I should know this because I'm a pretty much diehard Naruto fan. So, by this point, she's already gone on missions. She's already killed. So, she has key, which is killer instinct, or killer intent. And everybody's scared of her in the academy. They don't know why. They just are, even though she's the loud ma- or the dead last of the class. And this Jonin... Or elite joining because he currently has something that will make him um, um, lose chakra reserves very quickly. Walks up to the stand and the owners of the Ichiraku say, Ah, Kakashi, uh, would you like your normal? And he goes, No, I'm just here to talk. And he looks at the little girl and he says, uh, I'm sorry for this, but your grandfather has died. And he walks off, and the secretary is like, oh god. And the little girl starts laughing. Maniacally laughing. And Kakashi was told to watch the reaction. And she doesn't have a seal on her tongue to hurt her when she talks, and she's like, good. That bastard has tortured me my entire life. (laughs) So, the secretary hears this and goes, oh God. So, she's like, thank you for the meal. Uh, I think I should go visit Haruzin. He's probably in the hospital. Um, Talk to you later. And she shun-shweens away. She's not hiding anything anymore. She just doesn't care. So, she shun-shweens to the office. She still has the box in her hand. Or the hospital. She still has the box in her hand. And she arrives at the... A, a hospital and asks to see her ruse in Saratobi. <laughs> and the man says, I'm sorry, but you can't right this second. He's currently in the ICU or intensive care unit because of his injuries. And she goes, I can heal him. It's easy. I can heal him. I have the same, pretty much the same healing abilities as Tsunade, the slug princess. And they hear this and they go, uh, uh, okay. And so they lead her and she starts healing him. And she has been working on chakra control with Kage level exercises for the last uh, four years. But she's been flooding her jutsus with chakra just to make it look like she doesn't have any chakra control because the loud mouth did last spot she needed to keep up. So she heals Sarutobi completely. And they see his broken bones are fixed. His internal uh, wounds have been healed. Everything has been healed completely. And this only took two hours. Unlike the Slug Princess, which which would take like three because she does it slower. So (laughs) after... Five more hours of him being asleep, he wakes up and he sees a little girl next to him. And he notices it's the white-haired, white-eyed little girl that he was going to talk to. And he says, Naruko Uzumaki. And her eyes widen, going, who? Uh, what? And he goes, that's your real name. And she goes, um, okay. What's this box for? And she just drops, yeah, drop just drops the facade of fake fake emotions because she still has the childish uh, side. She's been suppressing it completely. She hasn't been doing this for 15 years like Sai was. She's been doing it for uh, 11? No. Um, 5? No. 
Five would be a uh, nine years. She's been doing this for nine years, not 15 years, so she still didn't have the emotions completely beaten out of her. So she just doesn't care. Her rebellious side is coming out. So he goes, well, that box is your father's gift to you. I was supposed to give it to you when you graduated the academy, but I didn't know it was you. So there you go. And there's another present in there besides the obvious kunai that you've already been using. And she goes, what? He goes, yeah, I know you already know the flying region. I know you already know all the techniques from the scroll of seals. And she goes, damn. And he goes, yeah, I do. I also do know that Donzo Shimura was your grandfather and that you, you acted like he was your, your grandfather around people. But now that he's dead, you don't need to act anymore. And she goes, great. <laughs> um, can I have his corpse? And he goes, uh, sh sure. I have to seal the eyes first. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. Don't seal the eyes yet. And he goes, why? And she goes, I need to do something. And he goes, okay. And he asks, is there a specific reason? And she goes, yes. Uh, you know how people have the Byakugan and the shouting gun? Well, this snake bastard and that bastard that you called my grandfather at one point did experiments on me, so I'm... And she pulls down her shirt or pulls up her shirt to show Hashirama's face. And yes, she, stu she does have Hashirama's face on her stomach. And she asks, I want this removed. So can your um, medical team remove it? And he goes, uh, we'll try. I don't know. Uh, I have good news for her now. And she goes, good news for who? And he goes, your grandmother. And she goes, uh, who's my grandmother? And he goes, oh, crap. I shouldn't have said that. Well, I got to go write a good, le a good letter. Uh, hopefully it can actually get to your grandmother. Yeah, hi, Jack. You can stop trying to knock me over. He's trying to knock me over again. So, I'm going to end it here. Yes, Donzo's dead. Yes, yes, and yes. So, yes. If you guys like this video, please share your support by subscribing. If you guys haven't subscribed already. But if you guys don't like this video comment what I did wrong and what I could do better next time and hopefully you guys enjoyed enough to think about liking the video because that would help me a lot talk to you guys later